Uh, we are here to talk about the game that seems to be on everyone's lips right now. We're obviously referring to uh, Genshin Impact. Um, the idea of this video is that we will show you the different aspects uh, of the game, ranging from uh, the core gameplay loop to how Genshin Impact monetizes all the way to different uh, uh, game modes. All right, uh, Genshin Impact is basically an action RPG, uh, and it's an actually an open world action RPG. So it's a single player RPG. So it's not an MMO. There are no other players, other players in the in the in the open world, but it's actually a single single player uh, open world uh, action RPG. And it's de developed by a Chinese company called uh, Mihojo. What, what kind of games have they made previously? So Mihojo has made basically they're famous from uh, Honga Impact. So Honga Impact is basically an action RPG with a with a kind of like a level uh, level to level structure. So not not an open world RPG. So Genshin Impact is a, is a next level uh, ne next level uh, kind of like a step for them uh, on on the, on the quality and the and the scale uh, of a game uh, they have. Do these two franchises have anything in, in common? They share the name Impact, but I guess mm, not that I know of, at least. So, no. so but uh, well, our style is kind of similar, mm. but that's mm. that's that's that. I think I think that's about it. Uh, not not in terms of the world or so on, or that's at least my my assumption of, of the game. But the game looks amazing, as you can see from the from, from the video, and and many people have compared this to the Zelda Breath of the Wild. Do you think that there is any solid grounds? Yes, definitely. If you look at look at the look at the screen right now, for example, uh, you can see the art style of, of, for example, how the grass looks in the game and so on. It's very uh, very similar uh, in terms of a uh, visual style as as in Zelda. Or if you go to combat, it looks the animations and stuff like that looks really similar uh, uh, as as in Zelda. Then, of course, uh, the similarities to, comes from the open world and the exploration gameplay. So you can go around the world, expo explore uh, everything, explore, find chests, complete puzzles uh, in, in the open world and, and so on. So definitely there are a lot of similarities, a lot of uh, inspiration taken uh, from Zelda games, but, but there are also a lot of differences. Yeah, I think uh, on differences, one thing that comes to my mind is the, is the character design, uh, which in this game is probably more more leans towards this sort of anime and waifu kind of uh, take. Yeah, yeah, the design characters. Definitely. The Genshin Impact was launched what two weeks ago, and it's yeah. uh, top crossing game in all the major markets in yeah. Japan, in in China, in in the US, and also in download rankings. So it's, it looks like it's, it's it's going really well. Yeah, definitely. And if you look at look at or follow any games media or any anything like it's a big name all around uh, a lot of lot of articles all the all the time uh, talking about it and what is kind of like a uh, exceptional that also the so called like a mainstream uh, games media that follows mainly just like PC and console games because this game is also uh, released of course uh, on consoles and PC so there are a lot of talk about this game, and, and in that sense, it's a quite an exceptional game and quite a groundbreaking game. That's a kind of like a cross-platform game with mobile and uh, console PC, uh, uh, and being such a huge viral hit almost. Yeah, I think it's really blurring the line of what is a console game and what is a free-to-play mobile game. It's so, definitely a yeah, groundbreaking game, game in that respect. Uh, what makes Genshin Impact truly special it, is its take on the sort of core gameplay uh, experience. Uh, Erno, can you walk us through what's the sort of the core loop of the game and, and what like what does player do in this game? Yeah, definitely. So uh, the main loop of the game is that, of course, as this is a such a kind of like a blockbuster mobile game, there's a really robust story with. Uh, uh, proper uh, voice acting and really beautiful uh, cutscenes and everything. So of course there's the main storyline that the players follow, uh, and that's the kind of like the the main uh, kind of like uh, paths that players take. But of course, as this is a big huge game, 
uh, there are a lot of lot of stuff on top of the actual uh, uh, main story. So we have the Archon quests, so which which are basically the main storyline. And at some points, uh, there comes these kind of like restrictions that. I need to level up my my account in, in order to progress uh, again in the in the game. So then, what what I can do? There are a lot of different kind of side quests. Some of them have like even proper story. Like we have some of some of the quests here. Then we have the world quest, basically more simpler, uh, simple style. Let's say clear clear an enemy camp or or that kind of quests. And then, of course, we have the daily quests, which uh, I can complete daily to get get resources, get experience, and so on. But for example, just in case of, uh, or for the case of the video, let's let's go and check out, for example, one of these world quests. So simple quests in order that they, you can complete to, in order to get experience for your accounts, uh, resources, currencies, and so on. So how it works is, of course, as mentioned, it's an open world game. So we can look at the map. Uh, there are a lot of stuff over here. So now I have the quest quest selected over here. So uh, it shows me where to go, where where they are. Then I have to navigate in the world map. Uh, there are different possibilities to teleport to different places if you have been there before and so on. To kind of like a fast travel uh, in the map. But we are already uh, quite close. So uh, what we can do is now go to the quests and we can take a quick look at the combat. So, uh, how the Genshin Impact's combat work, works is it's uh, basically all about elements. So, as you can see, for example, these enemies over here, they are basically frost enemies, so they are kind of like a, uh, freezing enemies and so on. Let's melt them. Yes, <laughs> let's do that. So, exactly, so what we can do, uh, we can change uh, different characters. So we have up to four characters at the time in a, in a party and all the different characters have different elements. So for example, this one is a fire character. So of course, if you think about how fire works with, with, uh, with, uh, with ice, of course, uh, it's effective and so on. And then we can combine different stuff. So let's say I use a, a water character first and then kind of like wet my enemies and then I use my ice character to freeze them. So the combat is all about combining and playing around with an element and it also works with the puzzles and everything. So uh, let's let's take a quick look at the combat. So how it works is that we of course we have the character, we have the basic movement uh, uh, kind of like buttons and uh, possibilities we can fight, fight over here. We have the basic attacks, then we have the special attacks uh, over here, like like for example, this uh, this one has this cute little <laughs> beer uh, that uh, basically uh, breeds fire. So now we are uh, basically using the fire against the ice, and it's super uh, in, uh, impactful. Oh, then we can change straight away to different characters. For example, this one is a wind character, so we can use wind uh, in combination with other elements, and so. On. So this is the kind of like the main idea on how the how the combat works in, in this game. We play around with different characters, use their different skills. All the characters have a couple of different skills. Uh, combine the elements, uh, combine the different skills, and then of course we have the uh, the basic basic combat. We have the kind of like a melee characters like this one, this one being. But then of course we have also the range character, so there's the possibility of kind of like using the aiming aiming side and using the ranged uh, weapons uh, in the game also. So this is the kind of like the basic basics of the of the combat layer in in, in Genshin Impact. What, what I would add to the sort of the quest design is that uh, oftentimes when I set on to complete a quest, uh, I actually found myself doing all kinds of other stuff than just, you know, completing the quest. So the, full, the, the, the game world and the universe is filled with, with interesting, uh, interesting stuff that you, you just want to, uh, you just want to do. So there are resources, there are enemy camp, uh, camps and, uh, uh, treasures and stuff like that. So oftentimes you end up seeing that, Hey, that there's an, you know, interesting K over there. So I, I just want to check that out. And I think that's, also something that uh, is very unique to 
this kind of game, uh, at least when we talk about mobile games in general, because a lot of the open world mobile games are just, you just, you know, put the autoplay on and you go to complete the quest and, and that's pretty pretty much it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So the open world is really rich. So, well, for example, here's a chest that oh, yeah. just found or, or, or there are, like I mentioned before, there are different puzzles and so on to solve and you can climb around the places and so on. So there are a lot of things to be discovered also on your way to your quest and yeah. so on. So there's the, the big uh, exploration, kind of like exploration element. element in the game, yeah. game as well. And, and, and also what I would like to add, uh, especially now we are talking about a game that's also released on mobile, and it's a free-to-play game, that most of mobile free-to-play action RPGs, at some point, the combat becomes just kind of like a means for the grind, and uh, there are always those out of plays and so on. Genshin Impact doesn't have an out of play. They have a huge focus on the actual combat to make it really fun, so that players doesn't have the need basically just out of play uh, combat because the actual combat is so fun uh, and, and uh, enjoyable uh, it, itself. Yeah, and there's a lot of variety in the, in the quest design as well. We had what, sneaking missions and yes. flying missions and stuff like that. So there's uh, a lot of diversity in that sense. Yeah. And I also want to stress the, the, the fact that the game does not rely on autoplay because it's really ex exceptional, especially if we think about the Chinese market. This is a top crossing, uh, top ten crossing uh, game in the in the Chinese market as well, and I can say that it's one of the only action RPGs that don't have any sort of uh, uh, core gameplay optimization, and you you're not even able to skip the cutscenes in this game, which is which is uh, interesting as well. All right, um, as we are talking about an RPG game, meta systems of course play a big role uh, as well so uh, Erno should we discuss a little bit uh, what kind of ways there are to develop your characters your items and, and make progress that way yeah definitely so of course this is an after all like a character collector collector RPG so you're collecting different characters and they have different elements and you it's an RPG, so you're developing the uh, character and so on. So also in Genshin Impact, there's a lot of vari variety in terms of how to develop your characters and how to upgrade them and how to upgrade their items and so on. So <coughs> first of all, uh, I would like to emphasize the, uh, the like how, how special this game is also in terms of kind of like a, quality over quantity uh, type of approach to characters. So as you saw in, in the combat, we are using... How the, many characters are there in the game? About. I think it's about 20 uh, at, at launch now. Yeah. But of course, more are coming. Uh, more are coming probably pretty soon already. Uh, but uh, basically, as you saw in the in the core gameplay, on the core combat, all the different characters, they have totally different type of skills, totally different type of elements, totally different ways to use them and all the different places to use them. So there are a lot of lot of characters. So what we can do then in order in, in the meta uh, layer of the game, how we develop them, how what's the long term progression uh, for the games. So if you start uh, by just the, your basic basic uh, basically leveling up. So characters characters have the basic basic level. Uh, what we can do, we can level them up using uh, these kind of like experience books basically work as a experience potion. So we use them uh, in order to kind of like uh, increase our character's levels, which increases, of course, the stats of the character. Pretty, and, pretty, pretty basic stuff for the RPGs. And this level up mechanic, uh, is, is it capped to your player level? So you have to have a certain kind of player level in order to... Uh, no, uh, actually, this, this is not capped to your player level, but... Uh, each character have these uh, level caps. So, for example, in this case, it's the 40. Or, uh, <laughs> let's say, I think, well, this is already in a, in a level cap. So, when you hit the level cap of the current, uh, kind of like the max, then you have to ascend to character. Also, kind of like a really usual, uh, usual way uh, uh, to kind of like uh, bring more, more ways to upgrade in RPG. So, what you can then do? You need to ascend the character. So what we need for that are different kind of material items. So different kind of shards, different kind of 
uh, items that you can get from playing and different kind of dungeons that we're gonna gonna take a quick look uh, pretty soon. But basically, you need to collect collect different uh, different materials. Then, when you ascend uh, the character, the max level restriction increases, and it, then you get a like a star for, for your character. And what we also need is the is the is the our adventure level to be be high enough. And if there's someone who is confused, yes, what right. does adventure rank mean? It's your sort of a player level. So as a player avatar, when you play this game, you complete quests. Everything you basically do adds up to the or increases your your player avatar level, aka adventure. Yeah, rank. yeah. It's, it's the same restriction as we saw for the for the main story progression. So it's the basic account level, so to speak, where you are. So there are different things that it restricts a little bit. Then uh, what what else we can do the one one character before going to the equipment items and so on. So another thing we have is the constellations. So what are constellations? So basically these are these kind of like a passive uh, bonuses or passive boosts for your for your character. So for example, in this case, uh, when when uh, this character uses a special special skill, uh, this one has this little hawk. Then when you uh, buy this constellation, it it uh, increases it increases its damage. So then, of course, the question is how we can increase or uh, upgrade these constellations. So we, for that, we need these uh, Stella Fortuna items. And how this game works uh, with the duplicate characters is, is these items. So basically, when you pull a gacha, gotcha, we, we're gonna take a look at of, uh, take a look at the gachas uh, on the monetization part of, of this video. Uh, but when you pull a gacha and you get a dupli duplicate character, then it basically automatically turns into the Stella Fortuna. And then you can use the, uh, that to kind of like a buy a next level of the constellation. And you need to buy these in order. So basically, in order to maximize the constellation of a special, special character, you need to pull six duplicate versions from a gacha. So that brings a kind of like a depth to the gacha system also that the duplicates has, has a, such a big value in, in the long term. Then, uh, as the last one, is of course the talents. So, uh, there are, like, like we saw, different skills for the, for the characters. And then, uh, we can upgrade them separately. If you want to, let's say, upgrade their basic attack or we want to upgrade their unique attack or so on, then we can use that. And for in order to do that, uh, we need to be in, in the ascension phase two. So basically, we have we need to upgrade character a little bit before we can uh, go into talents and upgrade them separately. In order to up upgrade these talents, it's kind of similar as in ascension. There are specific material items that you need uh, in order uh, to do the uh, upgrading. And Erno, is it also possible to develop? Your relation, sort of relationship with uh, with the characters. Well, wow. yeah, yeah. So there, there are. It's it's really light, but there is a small element of of, of this kind of like a relationship developing uh, in this game. So basically, when you uh, choose to use specific characters, you can increase the friendship level. And if I'm not totally wrong, I think the friendship level only kind of like uh, opens uh, some story, little bit story elements. Uh, uh, to the to the for the character and so on. And, when and you vo yeah, voice lines, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically, vanity items or cosmetic items or more richer backstory stuff like that. But it doesn't have any kind of like a direct gameplay impact uh, on on the characters. Wait, maybe we can show one of the voice lines if you pick a profile. Uh, yeah. Uh, the, this one. There we go. Yeah. So basically, there are the story story elements you can yeah. unlock with the friendships. And then there are voiceovers. All of the characters uh, are uh, voice acted, so there are a lot of, lot of, lot of dialogue and voice lines uh, recorded for this game. Yeah. And we we'll check that it's uh, this has voiceovers for I think four different languages: so Chinese, yes. Korean, Japanese, and English, which is quite remarkable as well if you think about the scope of this game. Definitely. 
Although, right, should we then up uh, jump to the equipment, equipment items? items? Yes, let's do okay, that. Okay, so, so of course, you're developing the characters, uh, the, a lot of different ways, a lot of depth in there, but of course, then the kind of like the the, uh, the variety and, and, and how to develop your specific character, how you want to de develop it, that comes from uh, different equipment items. So, to start off, uh, we have the weapons. So, of course, <laughs> different uh, characters have unique type of weapons. So, for example, in this case, there are there are uh, different bows, uh, but you can then change it. Of course, there are different different type of bows. Dif they have different statistics. They have different different uh, kind of like the passive passive skills. They do different kind of stuff, and so on. so you can a bit kind of like a, based on your gameplay style. You can you can choose uh, what whatever you want. Then, of course. There are different ways to upgrade uh, your weapons. So uh, in here uh, we have the enhance. So this is kind of similar to the characters levels. So what we can do here, we can uh, use these uh, little gems. So basically these are same as the uh, experience books uh, in, in in the game, but in this case these are for the weapons. So they increase the levels or we can use some of the weapons that we don't want to use. So we can use them as a mater material and then it basically increases the level. So that's the basic uh, basic uh, leveling for the weapons. But again here, as, as to you can get weapons from, from gachas, for example, uh, <laughs> there are also elements of duplicate, using the duplicate system uh, with weapons. So when you, let's say, you have a super unique, uh, rare weapon, but how you then uh, kind of like increase the uh, level cap uh, and get those stars uh, for the level is the duplicate system. So basically you need to get a duplicate from a gacha, for example, then you can combine uh, combine those two sim same, same weapons together and then basically uh, you can use that to refine it and then it goes to a next rank and then a level cap increases. So pretty similar as the characters using the duplicates, uh, giving depth to the gacha system, uh, giving more reasons uh, why uh, or what kind of like a giving more kind of like a value for pop pulling uh, same items or same characters and so on. And it's also possible to salvage your um, equipment items. So I think you could get those uh, experience gems. Or yes, whatever. yes, yes. So, so if you, you have something totally, you don't want to necessarily use it yeah. just as an, like a combined with, with an XP, you can just destroy the item to get 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 some uh, gems and so on. Yeah. Well, okay, uh, Kalle, do you want to talk about some little bit about the artifacts? Artifacts, uh, for sure, yeah. So artifacts serve as an additional sort of equipment item uh, system. So um, they are equipped to characters. They give uh, various kinds of uh, uh, boosts um, to, uh, to the character that you equip them with. Um, so we have this Adventures Pocket Watch here and we can see the, um, the sort of uh, boost that it gives to the, the character. These can be uh, upgraded as well. So you have the enhance uh, function over here. And just like with the uh, other equipment items that we were just talking about, um, we can use other um, other artifacts uh, to enhance these, uh, these, um, these artifacts. Um, I like this. And we get the boost to the to the equipment item. So the artifacts serve as another sort of an equipment item um, layer uh, in this game. And there's also the sort of uh, uh, set function, if I recall right. So if you yeah. combine certain kind of artifacts together, you get even more boosts. Yeah, exactly. So that that's where usually the, the biggest boost come from when you have, let's say, I want to yeah. build a... You, for this character, I want to build a set that has a four pieces of a specific type of uh, items, then I get the set bonuses and so on. So that's the, yeah. that's the big uh, way of kind of like uh, getting boost and how, how you want to build your specific character. Do you want it to be a, like a really 
uh, effective uh, or like doing a lot of damage or do you want it be that it can take a lot of damage a lot of defense and, and, and health and stuff like that yeah. so that yeah. that's where the like the customization for the for the character the biggest part uh, comes from yeah and it also gives a nice incentive for players to go after those individual uh, pieces of artifacts so that they can get the sort of uh, bonus perks to yeah. the to the artifact sets next up let's talk about sort of the different game modes and horizontal content that uh, Genshin Impact has so Erno uh, what different game modes get does Genshin Impact offer for players yeah so at the beginning of course we were talking about the question different side quests and stuff like that uh, uh, <coughs> on the game uh, but but there are of course a lot of different ty- type of dungeons and different uh, other specific type of uh, game mode. So what we have, of course, it's an open world. So Genshin Impact actually has an energy system which ties in the open world activities. So you can play the game freely as, as much as you want. You can explore as much as you want. You can complete quests as much as you want. But uh, for the open world activities that we see over here, there you actually use this energy. So what we have here are, for example, these ley lines. So basically, these are spots where you go, then you initiate a combat, you find, let's say, 10 enemies, you win them, and then you can collect the rewards by using 20 uh, of your energy. There are different types of ley lines. So for example, this is an experience ley line. So if you are in a need of, for example, experience boost, you just got a, let's say, new character and you want to level it up, you then, of course, want to use all your energy to, to get as much of uh, experience books to kind of like level up your character and so on. Then there are, of course, different ley lines for, for example, currency. If you see something in the stores that you want to or you, or you are need, in need of the currency or so on. So <laughs> that's uh, one thing. Uh, then there are bo- uh, these world bosses. So basically, you go there, then there's a boss fight uh, that you need to, need to beat. And again, the same thing. When you when you have defeated the boss, then you can use the energy in order to collect the reward. So, for example, in this case, there are these um, ascension materials. So, as we saw in the, in the in the meta system part of, of the video, and then for example, there are different artifacts uh, that you can collect from this specific boss. Those are the kind of like the open world activities, but there are also these dungeons, or in this game, they are called domains. So domains are basically uh, these uh, these uh, different type of uh, dungeons that you complete. So you go in there, uh, you do do some stuff uh, uh, in there, and then you complete it, and then you get rewards. So so there are different type of uh, domains. So of course. Some of them, again, some of them uh, give you, let's say, artifacts or something else, and some of them give you specifically, let's say, uh, the the ascension material items, or some of them give you specifically, let's say, XP items or so on. So there are a lot of different type of type of dungeons. So as an example, uh, we we are now at the gate of one 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 of the dungeons. So it works, we go to it, basically we enter the dungeon, then we select the difficulty based on our uh, based on our ranking, based on our uh, adventure rank and so on. Then we go there, we can we can start it, we choose our choose our team, go in there. Then there are usually of course different fights, there are different puzzles that I need to be solving. This is a bit similar uh, also uh, as in uh, in, in Zelda, so uh, as in the Breath of the Wild, they have these dungeons where uh, you complete them, there are puzzles and uh, fights to be had and so, uh, stuff like that. Are these dungeons something that you need to do alone or can you do it in co-op? Yes, you can actually do this in co-op. And this is some the element currently that Genshin Impact uh, has on the social, if you look at the social side of the, of the game. So when we go to the dungeons, we can also go there with our friends, or we can go to our friends' uh, open worlds and do those ley lines that we were looking. 
or let's say we just want to explore and climb the mountains and fly around or stuff like that. But for example, in terms of this case, we can start matching here. So if we want to go, we can enter this specific uh, domain with a group. So basically <laughs> there's up to, up to four uh, players at the same time. And then we can actually fight together, combine those, uh, for example, elements, as you remember from the core gameplay, we can combine the elements together. Some one of our teammates use some other element and so on and so on. So this is the current social uh, aspect of the game. There, there, there is not that much yet. Uh, there, there is no specific kind of like a co-op tasks or co-op missions that we can complete or or let's say dungeon that we can complete only on co-op. It's basically an, just another layer that if we want, we can do stuff with our friends, but we can do that also uh, solo. So there's definitely room for, let's say, expanding the co-op feature further in the thing. Yes. Yeah, at least personally, I would say there's definitely, or if there's, there's quite a need, for example, me personally, when I played the game, I don't feel the need. Of course, it's fun to go. It might be fun to go play with friends, but there is no really big incentives to actually socialize uh, yet in the game and so on. Yeah. Uh, then there is still uh, one last uh, one last feature or specific type of game mode that I want to show you in this video. And that's the feature that leans a bit more towards the end game. So as the end game of the uh, uh, currently in Genshin Impact, the end game of the, uh, of the game is basically, of course, about developing your characters. You have the big, big upgrade, a lot of upgrading layers and you want to get uh, stronger and stronger and stronger and so on. So then of course you complete the levels, you complete all the tasks and so on. But there's this uh, one dungeon that specifically is aimed towards the kind of like the end game of the of, of, of the things. So it's called Spiral Abyss, and <clears throat> what we can do here is that we have this kind of like a this is a bit kind of like a tower style dungeon. So we have the we have the different uh, difficulties that we can complete for, uh, first of all, and then get reward from that. And then we have the kind of like a recurring uh, event, so to speak, over here. So when we have completed all the eight uh, basic basic corridors, basic levels of, of the spiral abyss, then we unlock uh, this uh, uh, abyssal spire. And what is abyssal, abyssal spire? It's basically a dungeon which we which resets, I think, two times a month, and it always changes. So, for example. Sometimes it's it, it's leaning towards let's say ice characters or fire characters, and then you of course will be more successful if you have those characters and so on. And then it rewards you with a different kind of stuff, usually really really powerful powerful stuff. So for example, really powerful artifacts that you can only get from a Spiral Abyss or or uh, stuff like that. Can you do this in co op by the way? This is not uh, uh, possible yeah. to do in co-op, so this is all about kind of like how good mm -hmm. your team is and how good it fits to current uh, restrictions uh, of of the, yeah. of the uh, dungeon and so. On. But this is a one of the one of the few kind of like uh, features that's only focusing on uh, kind of like the end game and, and giving more end game content to the players uh, uh, to compete in or not 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 to compete in, but kind of like. Uh, try to beat i think something that is of great interest to many of you who are watching this video is the question of monetization so how does genshin impact monetize erno uh, what are the main things that genshin impact uses to monetize its player base yeah so of course this is on like if you look at the bare bones of the game, it's a character collector RPG. And like most of the character collector RPG, the big monetization, monetization uh, element is of course gotchas. So there are different gotchas, there are different event gotchas like uh, often in these type of games, specific featured characters getting higher rates for that specific specific time period and so on. So gotchas, of course, it's the main, uh, main uh, 
part of the monetization. And as we talked in the meta, meta uh, portion of the video, uh, there are a lot of depth in the gadgets because of the duplicate system. There are the, a bit over 20 uh, characters with different rarities, some, some of them more ra rare than others. And same with the weapons, some of them more rare and some of them more powerful than others. And even on top of that, if you get the, let's say, uh, gene in, for example, over here, it's, it's not there. So if you want to get it to full power, you need to get quite a few of the duplicates uh, for, for, the, for that specific character or for that specific weapon. Yeah. So then you kind of like, uh, there's a depth to kind of like, uh, or more regions to keep on pulling these gotchas. Yeah. Uh, so one thing related to this actually that just came to my mind is that uh, I think there were some uh, events going on where you could actually try out some of the characters, which I think was very yeah. interesting. So the players were exposed to those characters, they got to try them out, and they got, you know, you had the chance to familiarize yourself with the character, which you know, gives you then more, you know, incentive to also do something to, you know, obtain that character. So yeah, yeah definitely. So for example, this character, this was one of the featured characters of the, of the currently running gacha in the game. And there's at the same time, there's an event running, uh, basically where you can go play with this character, play with the one combat scen scenario, play around, try it out. It's uh, different skills how it how it works do you like the character and so on so like mentioned earlier in, in the core gameplay side each character they're so unique they have totally unique type of skills and so on so everybody has their preferences of course on what kind of gameplay they enjoy and so on so this is a one way to kind of like give players a chance to test it out and, and see how how do they like that specific uh, character then, of course, there are a lot of uh, other stuff uh, in terms of monetization uh, also in the game. So as gotchas is the main thing, but then, then there's also the battle pass system. This is actually something that unlocks quite late in the game. So you need to be, I think, adventure rank 20. So that's like plenty of hours in the game that yeah, you can would, even buy it. Yeah, like 15, 20 hours or something probably, like that. Probably something, something, something like there. So this is definitely something that's more kind of like a, towards kind of like when you have completed most of the, uh, the main story and then it gets more grindy, so to speak, and then you need more stuff to progress in and stuff like that. So towards the, a bit towards the end of the game and, and so on. So. But how the battle, battle pass system works in this specific game? Of course, we have your basic free layer. Uh, we have the basic uh, paid layer. Um, so uh, over here, there are different rewards. As we can see, the X items for the, for the characters, for the weapons. Uh, then we can unlock different type of uh, uh, different type of uh, like the talent upgrade items for were there. These are the gacha currency, for example. Uh, and so on and so on. One of the unique things in the battle pass that you can unlock is the unique weapons. So there are up these uh, five weapons that you can uh, unlock when you reach the battle pass level of 30. So you can choose, you get the box and then you can choose, okay, which of these unique weapons that I want. So if I want a, a weapon for my archer character, for example, then maybe I want to choose this. It's a really good, uh, unique uh, battle pass tied uh, weapon that I can choose. So when I reach the uh, level 30, I get this box, then I can choose uh, whatever, 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 uh, whatever I want from those uh, specific weapons. So then of course, how the, how the uh, progression works in, in, the, in the battle pass. So in Genshin Impact, it is basically a uh, task tied progression. So we have the daily missions uh, for the for the battle pass experience. We have the weekly missions uh, changing every week uh, for the battle pass, or then of course some of the longer term uh, uh, longer term missions that run through the whole battle pass season. What's the price for the battle pass at the moment? Is it possible? So if you look at the price uh, at the moment, it's ten dollars uh, the basic, but of course as in many cases. You can also buy buy the more advanced version, 
where you get already uh, straight away to the level 10. And for example, you get that specific uh, name card uh, for your, your, your profile that you can, you can show off there. Would you not say that, uh, like, how would you evaluate, uh, like, how compelling is the reward pool of the, of the battle pass system in, in your eyes? Uh, well, definitely, if you think about the price, so then ten dollars, uh, and if you look at the, for example, how many gacha pools you can get from there, uh, you can get a unique item uh, and and so on. So I definitely see that if I would be playing this game for for the mm-hmm. long run, uh, I would definitely see the value there. As usual with the battle passes, it's often a bit more lower tier price points and uh, kind of like a. For many players, it's the first first uh, IAP that they make for the game and so on. So, definitely, if, if playing the game, uh, I I would more, most likely most likely uh, get this. Then, just as the last mention, there's also the possibility of purchasing directly levels if if you want to want to uh, progress faster in the battle pass. Uh, then there are still a couple things in terms of monetization that we want to quickly quickly look at. So if we go to the shop, we of course get this uh, sub- subscription system. So getting premium currency uh, on a daily basis for a month, four or five dollars. Uh, then of course we can buy buy these uh, crystals, uh, which work as a premium currency in this game. And then of course we can use that to uh, buy different type of stuff. So different bundles with, uh, for example, these XP items or so on, or then we can transfer uh, the the premium currency into these primogems, which are basically kind of like uh, works as a dual premium currency. So so basically it works as a premium currency. So it's re- really rare currency, but you can get it from playing. But Genesis Crystals is a currency you can get only from uh, actually using money. So this, a lot of same things are uh, like um, they are using a lot of same things, but the, there's the difference of one one of the one of the currencies being only only possible to uh, get from uh, using a real money, and then you can of course buy buy the gacha uh, currencies and, and 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 stuff like that with that uh, currency. And then just as the last one, the mention of we were talking about the game modes. There's also the energy, and if you want to grind let's say for example the xp items we can use our all all, all of our energy uh on the on the xp ley lines for example and then we can replenish the energy uh i think it's six times uh, per day by using using the primogems uh, uh to to get get more energy in order to grind more uh, of the of the of the different things that need need energy um, on a general level, would you or not agree that, uh, that the monetization at the moment in Genshin Impact it's it's not super aggressive? I'd say it's it's like uh, uh, you have good gacha pools and stuff like that. But like as a player, when you play the game, I would say the first couple of hours, even first ten hours, there's not huge push towards spending spending money so the focus is definitely on engaging the players with the game yes definitely if we think about it, especially the player onboarding and so on the monetization it's not pushy at all so you you are gonna like uh, introduced to this huge world really high production values really beautiful cut scenes it pulls you in as a player first and then they slowly really slowly like i mentioned the battle pass it comes in in uh, adventure rank 20 so really slowly kind of like bring uh, the monetization element uh, into the game and so on. And also, actually, you can you can play as a free-to-play player really, really far without any kind of like a must to use the money. So, for example, most of the characters that you can get, they are good enough to progress the main story and so on. So I'd say it's, it's really light at the moment, but still, as, as we can see, its performance, its launch performance has been a huge hit. Uh, so this kind of approach of kind of like a engagement first, then monetization second, uh, have been working uh, for this uh, specific game. Super good. Uh, basically, if you look at action RPGs, for example, mm-hmm. it's almost the most already like the most successful R- action RPG yeah. uh, in the West. So action RPGs in mobile uh, in in the West there hasn't been too many of those, but now this is Genshin is in top ten. So yeah. that's a 
quite an achievement. Yeah, it it looks like that, that they, they at least have. There's a possibility that they have finally found the uh, the formula to use to to uh, find an audience in the West for action RPG games. Um, but yeah, uh, I think many of you are also wondering that uh, what's next for Genshin Impact. It's now been out there for two weeks, so it's <laughs> relatively fresh game still. Um, Erno, do you see anything striking you as a sort of a thing that you that uh, Mihoyo is probably thinking that uh, they might want to add to the to the game in the f- f- following updates? Yeah, well, definitely, of course. Uh, more character as is the character collector RPG. It lives with it, with its character, so more characters incoming uh, to the game, most likely quite 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 quickly. More uh, different type of events, utilizing those characters, giving more rewards, giving more uh, kind of like limited time content, content to the, to the game and so on. I haven't completed the game yet, but but uh, I would assume that probably in in their plans is also expand the the main story uh, forward. So the big updates that bring the main story forward. More stuff on there, more more kind of different different quests. Uh, then, of course, uh, on top of the on top of the characters, as the characters are built uh, in such a way, like we've been talking about the whole video, that they have the unique stuff and and with the story and everything, they actually have a really like a personality, and they definitely Mihojo has been focusing on building a brand from those characters. So. People start to enjoy those characters, and there are a lot of there are already like a fan fan posts and kind of like a fan art and everything like that uh, from those characters. So then, of course, one thing definitely that comes to mind straight away is build on top of that and different kind of like skin systems for their favorite characters and stuff like that. Definitely, uh, definitely uh, something Mihocho is probably already already thinking about. Yeah, uh, and also something that comes to my mind is to just expand on the social feature side. So right now uh, the game, for example, doesn't have any sort of community based like alliance or guild system or something like that, which is quite prevalent in, in many uh, action RPG games. So if they want to um, sort of improve the social aspect, aspects of the game, that's probably something that will be added at some point. And then, of course, when you have the guild system, you can start light and then start expanding it with different kinds of guild-related features. So that might be something. And then also, if they want to engage the sort of uh, players that play RPG games for the competitive aspects, then the obvious question is that, are they going to add PvP to the game? Yeah, that's definitely, of course, in, in a game like this with a long-term progression and everything, it's always kind of like a... It's not an easy, 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 easy type of game to add, add uh, the PvP with the power progression in, in, in uh, as, as in these cases. And kind of like a uh, minimize the pay-to-win uh, aspects uh, necessarily that... For, for, I would assume that the, this, the, this audience, uh, that or at least the new audience that this game has found uh, might be a little bit uh, hesitant uh, with. But of course, if we we'll look at the core gameplay, and as the core gameplay is so fun, then mm-hmm. the possibility of actually playing competitively against each other with that type of uh, gameplay in an action RPG also like uh, feels kind of like an interesting uh, idea or interesting aspect that could be kind of like uh, explored. And I guess that would depend on the geographical market as well. I think. You had a good point there with the Western audience, but then again, I think with, uh, for example, some Asian audiences like the Chinese audience, they might actually be more willing to accept the more sort of pay to win uh, mentality in the in the game. Just to wrap things up, um, thanks for watching uh, this uh, video. I really hope that you enjoyed it. Um, we'll be coming out with more mobile game analysis, so if you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe. If you want to learn more about mobile games and the mobile gaming market, make sure to visit us at GameRefinery.com, link in the description. Until next time!